we really don't know precisely when Larsen C will collapse. Larsen A collapsed in 1995 and Larsen B collapsed in 2002. Larsen C is a bit further south and considerably larger. It really might have a lifespan of decades, perhaps a century, but all of the indications are that Larsen C is thinning and this current research tells us it's thinning from above and from below, a two-pronged attack. So we really think that eventually Larsen C will be lost. The ice in an ice shelf is floating, so when it melts, it won't have a big impact on sea level rise. The impact on sea level rise comes as the glaciers that feed the ice sheet no longer feel the resistance from the ice shelf there. And so they flow more rapidly and put more ice into the ocean, and that causes sea level rise. We know that after Larsen A and Larsen B, a fairly large fraction of the total Antarctic contribution to sea level rise comes from those glaciers that once fed those ice shelves. Larsen C is bigger, and so the impact of losing Larsen C would be a significant extra contribution to sea level rise above the thermal expansion of the oceans and above the extra co the contribution from the larger part of Antarctica down in the West Antarctic ice sheet. When Larsen A and Larsen B were lost, the glaciers behind them accelerated, and they are now contributing a significant fraction of the sea level rise that's emerging from the whole of Antarctica. Larsen C is bigger, and if it were to be lost in the next few decades, then it would actually add to the projections of sea level rise uh, and the rate of sea level rise by 2100. We expect that sea level rise around the world will be something in excess of 50 centimetres higher by 2100 than it is at present. And that will cause problems for coastal cities and low-lying cities. Understanding and counting up, adding up all of these small contributions from Larsen C and all of the glaciers around the world is very important if we're to project with confidence the rate of sea level rise into the future.